Hi, I'm Deepthi Ahuja, head of content at HD Smartcast. Welcome to Why Leadership Fails. This is a podcast where we have unfiltered, candid conversations with successful leaders and explore how they have learned from their mistakes, their failures. But before I introduce our guest on the show, I'd like to set the tone. Uh, did you know that India has a total of 36% women in the senior management positions when it comes to mid-market businesses? This average is 4% higher than the global count of 32%. As we continue to celebrate the International Women's Day, it is important for us to honor the invaluable contributions of women in such leadership roles. We must recognize their resilience, vision and transformative impact in different fields that they contribute to. We are privileged to be joined by Priya Agarwal Hebbar. Priya is the chairperson of Hindustan Zinc Limited and the non-executive director at Vedanta Limited. Following her love for animals, in 2010, she founded Yoda, youth organization in defense of animals. Today, it is the largest animal welfare organization in Maharashtra. Hi Priya, welcome to Why Leadership Fails. How are you? Hi, I'm very good Deepti. Thank you for having me here. Priya, let's begin with a very, very simple yet crucial question. Why is it important to have women in leadership roles and how does their inclusion contribute to the overall success of different companies? So, um, you know, let me start with, uh, you know, how I began, um, you know, the first day of me um, on the board, it was just me. Um, I was a 20 something year old young girl and around me was eight um, you know, extremely senior executives, 50, 60 year old head honcho men um, who really, you know, you know, it, 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 it made me anxious, but it also made me realize that this needs to change. Yeah. If the company needs to progress in the direction the world is going, there needs to be diversity in thinking across the board. And this is where it needs to begin. And today we have five women on our board. This is uh, the kind of change this is brought is unparalleled because women understand women and yeah. they do understand each we understand each other's needs and you know uh, when we when at the outset you know being in, a, in the natural resources co- um, you know company being in in a, in a mining sector which is originally seen as a male dominated sector to uh, you know to pledge or to say that we are going to have 30 percent women across our employees by 2030 or sooner was um, you know was something that uh, made us jittery in the beginning but we knew we had to do it and we knew that this was the only way forward um when we made that uh, you know when we made that happen uh, today we are seeing that we're already 21 percent uh, there and women across it doesn't matter you know whether it's leadership level or on the shop floor or underground women are thriving and are doing and and really doing the impossible. We've really realized at Vedanta that there is nothing a woman cannot do. It's very important to do this from the top. When you have a board where, you know, women are equally represented, that is how we will drive and ensure that women across the organization are equally represented and are are thriving and are doing what they're really capable of. That's really, really reassuring to know. Now, the last year's theme for the International Women's Day was Digit All, Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality. This year, it's Invest in Women, Accelerate Progress. While the campaign theme is Inspire Inclusion, I want to understand from you, Priya, what does Inspire Inclusion mean to you? And uh, talk about some key factors that can help women succeed. So, um, you know, Inspire Inclusion for me, really the first, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is creating equal possibilities and giving equal opportunities. Um, You know, this is, uh, this is, and, and, when we're talking about inclusion, and, and I love the fact that it's inspiring inclusion this year, because we have to talk about inclusion far beyond just women. We're yeah. talking about inclusion across uh, the diversity spectrum. Um, you know, it, it, today, it doesn't matter whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, 
where you come from what your cultural background is whether you're a person who have um, you know, differently abled if yeah. you have the capability and if you have the passion and determination you should be um, you should be given the opportunity to drive uh, towards your success so it's about being able to live in an in a country in a world where everyone has equal opportunities um another example i can give you is that um, you know at vedanta we uh, you know we we you know to to ensure we are enhancing our um dni we you know we uh, a few um, last year i met um, some of our transgender employees mm. and when i spoke to them um i asked them what is it that we can do to enhance your journey at vedanta further um you know the one of some some of the answers were amazing one of them that all of them um you know said was that we would be grateful um if vedanta could uh, could uh, you know is something very very important to us is our gender affirmation surgery and uh, it's it's very very expensive it's not easy for us to afford can vedanta help us so just a few months later we launched um, a policy where we give 2 lakhs um you know uh, to individuals who want to have this gen- gender affirmation surgery and we give them one month of um time to recover and already three three individuals have um you know uh, have taken this up and it's it's absolutely amazing you know because finally it's it's all about inclusion in at every different level lovely look at that uh, third wave feminism just popping out <laughs> uh, priya if i were to ask you about that one initiative uh, that you're most proud of at vedanta especially when it comes to metals and mining what would that be and why so uh, a few um i mean a few coming off the top of my head uh one of course i, I mean i'll talk about two um one is that in 2019 when women were legalized in india to go underground vedanta was the first company to get women underground and today we have a mine that is led by women and these women are driving forklifts driving suvs doing work that they wouldn't have imagined they could do before and they are thriving and they're excelling at what they do and you know and and, and what's amazing is that even uh, you know the kind of technology they're bringing in the kind of progress they're bringing in it's it's unmatched and unparalleled um beyond that even in our give back initiatives we had a we've uh, we've uh, uh you know we've we've pledged that we are going to take care of or positively impact the lives of 100 million women and children um with that we launched the nanghar project and within the nanghar project you know one of the new um one of the new initiatives that we started is the millet bar initiative um we're giving these millet bars um that are you know that uh, nutritious millet bars to uh, as a pilot to 50000 children across varanasi and these millet bars are loaded with nutrition um we have seen that um, uh, you know in th- in the three month pilot that um, children who have one meal and the millet bar uh, mm-hmm. within three months move from the malnourished category to the healthy category and this is you know if if this millet bar can you know be um, can be trans uh, you know can can this millet bar can really transform the country it's initiatives like this that can help us beat things like malnourishment awesome awesome uh now uh you know in today's day and age uh, we we have to be ambitious just to you know survive uh mm-hmm. and our work life balance in that sense just goes out of the window mm-hmm. in such situations according to you how does one prioritize and manage their mental health so this is a very very important uh, you know uh, very very important question um for me personally you know i have to make sure uh, that i spend time doing uh, activities that completely cut me out of my everyday mm. um you know so i you know for example music and animals and wildlife are areas that i am truly passionate about so mm. i make it a point that every few months i go to the forest i go to the jungle um i just went to ranthambore and came back i will shut off my phone for 3 or 4 days and that is where i really find my spiritual connect um being amongst wildlife being am- amongst biodiversity being in the middle of nature um you know after those 3 or 4 days i feel revived and i come back and i feel brand new um you know i spend time with music i i listen to a lot of music it it revives me so i think also just finding that 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 space that um, you know that taking that time finding that space that gives you you know an epitome of or or a feeling of um, or a sense of um, calm is very very important and of course you know overall life is life is tough it's not easy um, you know and 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 post the pandemic the way 
things are changing, the way, um, you know, the uh, workforce is changing, it's difficult. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, I think uh, it's, uh, it's about finding time in your routine to ensure you're taking care of yourself. Uh, physically taking care of yourself mentally having someone to talk to at uh, Vedanta we're st- you know where we're looking forward to really really working towards implementing health uh, mental health in- uh, initiatives for all our for, for all our employees um, whether it's yoga meditation having someone to speak to having a helpline so all of these are very important amazing uh, you mentioned music I'm just curious yeah. to know is there a song or a quote that holds a special place in your heart um, there is um, a song that I turn to every time I'm down. Uh, it's a song that not maybe not many many of you have heard of, or many of many people would have heard. It's a song called um, "You Gotta Be" by Desri, um, and the words of that are really really uplifting. Um, it's about how you gotta be strong, you gotta be calm, um, you know, in, in in situations, and and really when you hear that, you 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 feel like you know you feel like you're back yeah, in a good place. Nice. It just, it just, you know, all culminates to you better take care of your mental health before it gets too bad. Absolutely. <laughs> take absolutely. that break, girl. Take that break. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You have to take that break. It's so important. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, growing up, it's very important to have female role models, right? Mm-hmm. I wonder if you have one and um, why are they so special uh, to you? So I think, um, you know, I wouldn't say that I just have one role model. Um, there are many and every yeah. day for me, for me, honestly, every day the women I meet inspire me, um, you know, whether it's at work or whether outside, everyone has their battle to fight. Um, if you go to, uh, you know, if you speak to any woman uh, out there and you, you you spend some time with with them, woman, man, anyone, if you spend some time with them, you hear that you hear their story. Everyone's fought a ba- battle. Everyone's come out of something difficult. And each and every story inspires me. Um, you know, I I, um, I can give you a few stories. Um, there's there's a lady um, at at our Nandhar, and you know she she was always worried. She's she's um, you know she's 50 now. Um, she was 45 when she had her first child, mm-hmm. and um, and and when her child was growing up, she was very worried that she hasn't completed her education. So how will she teach her children? Mm-hmm. And when her child was only uh, when her, now when she's you know 50 something, her child is only nine or ten years old, and he's telling her that mom, it's never too late. Um, finish your education now and she has started uh, her 10th grade now at the age of 50 and this is an, a small rural part of Rajasthan so really it's it's so amazing what what women can do another one is is um, a lady who's the head of our security um, she met me and said that there are only two things in life that I want to do and she's part of the LGBTQ community she said I want to I want to adopt I want to buy my mother I want to uh, I buy my mother a house and I want to adopt a baby girl and just a few months ago she said she did both um, so and, and again this is a girl from small town of India so uh, so India is aspirational women are as- aspiring to do uh, amazing things and if you if you're fearless if you know you're doing the right thing nothing can stop you now this is a signature question of the show and uh, I can't, I've been waiting uh, to ask you this question. You know, we all make mistakes in our lives. Um, it'll be very inspiring to know the one mistake that you made, what you learned from it, and how did that learning help uplift others around you? So, there are many that I can think of. Um, which one should I say? I think um, one of the... I think one of the biggest, um, I think one of the biggest examples I can give is probably, you know, growing up, uh, blaming my mum. So, so my my father used to travel a lot, and uh, you know, and we used to travel a lot with him too. And um, I remember, uh, you know, changing. I've changed twelve to fourteen schools in my life, and I used to feel really really troubled because every every few years I had to start again make new friends and I used to always um, you know uh, I used to always tell uh, my mother that why can't you you know why can't you say something to him why can't you stand up for me why can't you um, you know be there and uh, you know I, I don't like this kind of movement I'm not feeling you know so I, 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 I was I spent a lot of time being upset with her when I was younger because of this 
and but that was the biggest mistake and i think and i believe that that was a big mistake that i made because what she has done and the compromises that she has made in her life is unmatched and in fact all of this change that has um, you know that that i've um, that 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 i've undergone in my life and the number of cities and countries and schools i've changed have only developed me into a different person with you know with with uh, with unique experiences that you know and and i think that's been a big part of my growth journey so i think you know it's 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 these things that that help you grow as a person as well it takes a lot of guts to actually you know come out in the open on a public platform and say something uh, regarding your intimate relationships you know especially with your parents uh, i i i've done that and it's almost brought me to tears because you yeah. know as children we don't really understand these things uh, it's the social engineering in us uh, yeah. that just sort of uh, makes us think uh, differently about our parents that they're not doing enough but but Yeah, uh, I, I'm glad that you came to that realization. Well, it's so important. I, I probably realized it very, uh, you know, now rather I should have realized that much much earlier. I'm I'm just uh, now waiting for a feedback from your mum uh, once she hears this episode. Yes. I just wonder. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, uh, Priya, for being so open and candid uh, regarding your life, regarding your work. Um, you know, you've come across as a really, really strong personality. Thank you so much for being on Why Leadership Fails. Thank you so much, Deepthi, for having me here. Thank you. It was really, really wonderful talking to you and sharing my experiences with you. Same here. Thank you.